Good day all. I hope all of us are in good health by grace of God. And again, the mantra is stay home, stay safe. Coming to our uh, continuation of the lectures, the last time we have talked about the squat, the squat calculations, and an example of hazards associated with okay. overtaking at a closer range. Wide rule number 30. Today, we are going to discuss and talk about the enhanced effect of the hydrodynamical interaction, the squat, which is very much pronounced in a narrow channel or fairway, and of course, restricted waters, rivers, etc. So, the one what I've drawn here, you may see part of board being blank. The way I will describe you this, and I believe you all will be able to understand what actually the hydrodynamical interaction is doing, that is when the vessel is in the restricted waters. As far as the formulas and calculations are concerned, I know we all can find it anywhere. With a blink of an eye, even on Google, YouTube, etc. My main idea is to make uh, mariners understand the factuality of it, what actually is happening when the vessels are transiting in narrow channels and fairways. So, please pay attention over here. I've drawn three ships, numbered one two and three. Interaction between the ships in a narrow channel. Now, this, what I've drawn here with the black, you know, the banks, is a river. The banks are not in straight line, they are very topsy-turvy. This being the upstream and this being the downstream. I've shown the arrow here with upstream and this being the downstream. Now, one question I'd like to ask before I proceed further, which is normally a question asked to the master or advised to the master when the vessel is in a river or in restricted water where the tidal flow is very steep. Normally, a mooring master or a loading master would come and ask or tell master, Captain, please be careful. The tide is ebbing from this time to this time. So he'll give you that synoptic arch and most of us do have the title ranges in our ATT and on all the computer softwares. So my question is, why somebody gives such a word of caution for an ebbing tide? Why does not they give us a word of caution during the flooding tide or for the high tide? especially in these kind of areas I'm talking about. Because this particular lecture of mine is restricted to the, mm -hmm. you know, rivers and restricted waters, etc. I will go step by step as in how we cross the bridges. Now, the reason is why everybody cautions us for, a, for an ebbing tide is, let's take this example, this is an upstream, this is a downstream. The river is flowing or coming somewhere from mountain somewhere. The river is going downstream this way to the sea, sea mouth where sea and the rivers they join together. So the flow is already here. But when the tide is flooding, the water is coming from the seaside towards the river, river that is going upstream. But therefore, there is always a resistance for the flooding water into the river. So the effect is not much, though it is there considerably. But when I compare it with an ebbing tide, because the water is receding or flowing this way. 
it multiplies the quantum at which the water is flowing from the river towards the sea mouth. So that is the reason we have to be very cautious in rivers when the tidal ranges are very high like for example when we talk about Haldia, what I recall with my experience, it's approximately around 18 to 20 feet. In Mississippi River, something that may be a little higher, maybe around 20 plus feet, the ranges of tides. Now, I hope I have been able to convey the message that why the ebbing tide, one has to be very careful of to tend their moorings and gangways and hoses and uh, be very cautious so that the ship doesn't get you know, moved out of the berth or wherever she is secure. So, the strength of ebbing tide is very strong and very high compared to the flooding tide as what we have just discussed. Taking, uh, coming back to my initial statement, what I said earlier, there are three ships, one, two and three. Let's say this could be a Suez Max tanker. Let's take it as a Suez Max tanker. This being a, you know, uh, a chemical tanker, so let's say 25,000 ton or 20, yeah, around 25,000 ton. This being a small vessel, an offshore vessel or a supply vessel. So, Swiss wax tanker, chemical tanker and a supply vessel. Now, these two ships are proceeding up the stream. This one is coming down the stream. When we look at it, what actually is happening hydro, from the hydrodynamical interaction as far as that is concerned. For that you will have to be with me from the, for some time on the hypothesis. Only then I'll be able to make you all understand. Let's say the river has stopped flowing. The ships have stopped moving, these three ships. And again, hypothetically, if I pick up this ship, put it on this table, one, two, and three, I put, put them here on this table. What do we actually see? Remember, what I said, everything is stopped. And that's when I pick up these three ships and put them on the table. What do we see? We see nothing but void of the size of this ship, these three ships. And these voids are nothing but underwater volume of displacement. So what is happening? If I put the reel back to normal means to life, what is happening? The water, water is ingressing first to fill up this void as in how the ship is making headway upstream. And same thing is happening here and here. But because being the restricted water, the width of the channel is not much. This gradient over here is the steepest. Because of the steepest or the steep gradient, the water is going to first gush through into this void. Till such time, the gradient is getting balanced between this and this vessel. This vessel will be getting certain amount of water. But the main more the influx of the water is getting put into this void because of which this ship, if she is far away, it's okay. This particular banking cushioning, I'll come back later, though I've drawn in blue, which I'll come back later. First, let's try to understand. Because of this aspect, this vessel will be experiencing a kind of force by virtue of which she is getting probably drawn into the bigger vessel because of the vacuum or the suction due to the steep gradient which has already been created because of the underwater volume of displacement of this Suez Max tanker. The effect is happening as we speak, continuously. So many times you don't notice, but yes, we will realize that the ship is either, will you realize bodily setting towards this vessel and you are experiencing some problem in the steering. Because the water is first filling up this, such time the gradient is steepest, 
the, this vessel will experience this and this vessel will have a horrendous amount of time because this is the smallest one with the smallest underwater volume of displacement. Mm. So this vessel will have sort of tendency to get drawn towards the ship bodily because of the vacuum created in this due to underwater volume of displacement. This one will have a, again horrendous amount of time by getting drawn towards the bigger tanker in this direction because she's already heading for it. I'm, I'm making it, you know, with the dotted green lines. She's already heading down south and she's already getting, you know, bodily attracted towards this vessel. 